So DJ and I met well, through the NYVR meetup group that he runs, um, which is a super interesting group that navigates the worlds of VR. Um, he's extremely knowledgeable on a variety of different visual technologies. We'll get into a little bit of the terminology of uh, the different kinds of mediums. Um, but we're here today in New York. I'm learning a lot. I'm catching up on the latest and greatest in visual technology. Um, and there are all these different terms to categorize, right? And so what are some of the main terms that you use that you hear others using that embody this sure. category of technology? Yeah, I think it's interesting and in, when we're involved in this industry so deep, um, the industry is really young and, and we're trying to, to actually define the words and define the terms and, and the hardware and the technology moves so fast, we're, we're always playing catch up. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the fundamental start is you have two main mediums, it's AR and VR, which is augmented reality and virtual reality. Um, virtual reality is where the, the whole world is replaced. Uh, with digital content, um, that's the headsets uh, that are out there. Uh, augmented reality, you're looking at the real world and computer graphics are being overlaid onto that world. Um, the combination or, or uh, both AR and VR, uh, many people are using the term XR to encapsulate both of those uh, mediums. Uh, another term is called mixed reality. Uh, that was basically um, put out there by Microsoft, uh, trying to to find that term uh, as the catch-all phrase. Now, speaking of Microsoft and the HoloLens, is holographic reality yet another dimension of that, or does that follow under mixed reality XR? Or is it its own thing altogether? Yeah, I think um, most people picture holograms as just a, another way to show three-dimensional content. Uh, so VR headsets show VR content, AR headsets show AR, holograms show three-dimensional assets without the requirement to put anything on your head. Which is awesome. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and, you know, we talked a little bit about how uh, the nature of 5G connectivity, which will affect real estate in so many ways, and there are a lot of kind of abstract ideas about what it may do. It's very conceptual still. Um, but how will it play out in advancing some of these visual technologies or mixed sure. realities? Sure. So we think uh, 5G will be a huge enabler for the industry uh, to become more streamlined devices. Uh, so right now, um, both augmented reality and virtual reality technology basically have to ha has to have a lot of the computing power on board. Uh, what that means is you have large devices with large batteries and large processing power and, and heat. Um, heat control. That's right. So 5G is a large pipe which allows all of the processing power to be done in the cloud. It's also super fast. It's called latency. Um, it's fast enough that when we turn our head, the data can get down quick enough to the headset so we don't see that lag in time. Sure. 5G basically allows big virtual and augmented reality headsets to be reduced in size to something eventually the size of a pair of glasses. And, and when that happens, adoption will ultimately go through the roof. So you think the evolution of hardware in terms of experiencing AR, VR, holographic, all of that stuff will translate into consumer-friendly wearables That's versus right. like a big hefty headset or whatever hardware we're using today. That's right, yeah. Our, our, our belief is that the evolution of mobile technology and our phones uh, will go to a, a pair of wearable eyeglasses. So even getting rid of the phone as the interface, I, I potentially. Think, yeah, I think I think a lot of the the people are envisioning that the phone will reside in our pockets um, and be a, a, a processing unit, um, but the eyeglasses will be the way that we visually interact with the data. And you had mentioned something interesting when I first got here, how people are really, you know, Apple is kind of helping us evolve into somewhat of cyborgs, which is a little <laughs> out there, right? And we're not gonna go too Black Mirror in this episode. Um, but it is interesting as we're start of, starting to, you know, adopt these wearables as an extension of our life, as an extension of the function that we wanna uh, conduct ourselves. So like what? Yeah, I, th I think it is a little scary, uh, but if you look at, at least, 
if you just look at Apple, Apple started with phones and now they have watches and now they have ear pods. Um, they are looking to connect all of our senses. Um, and the last piece or the last component of that is on the visual side. Um, and our phones have this much space to show us content. Uh, and the user interface for accessing that content is really limited. Um, when that content appears in our field of view, uh, it's just going to be more streamlined. Um, and we're going to be able to get more data. Um, and phones have reached a, a point in their evolution that they really they can't migrate or, or evolve much further than what they do right now. Uh, so, yeah, our, our belief is that AR glasses will be the next evolution and, and the next way in which we interact with technology. Well, we'll be here in a few years to see if this actually plays out. Tell us what you guys think.